I've altered course and descended to 9,000 feet. The goal is to remain clear of clouds as well as clear of any rainfall. The closer we get to the storms, the stronger they show on radar. Once inside 40 miles, this might be related to the storm intensifying. Outside that distance, the storm will appear stronger as it gets closer, even if the intensity remains the same. As we draw closer, I want to stay five miles away from any rainfall per the guidelines. The view out the window is working about as well as the radar so far. It appears dark ahead as well as to the right, and through a break, we can see the top of the cumulonimbus. The storm scope is hyperactive from a distance with most of the activity to the right. Now, as we draw closer, it is sorting storms out better with a lot of activity to the right, some to the left, and a nice split between the two areas. To the eye, all the bad stuff is to the right. Now the plot thickens. The air traffic controller reads a SIGMAT that tells of a line of thunderstorms in the vicinity. It is likely the weather with which we're dealing at the moment. There's no mention of them being severe. We have a clear radar and storm scope picture straight ahead, and the visual picture is not bad. Anytime there is radar return that's perceived as a line by the ground radar network, though, passage through a gap may not be smooth. There tends to be turbulence all along the line, even where there's no rain or light rain. It is likely that the worst turbulence would be in connection with the heavier rain. If flight were possible beneath all clouds with sufficient terrain and obstacle clearance, that might be where the smoothest ride would be found. Pilots who don't have it sometimes think airborne weather radar is magic. I love it, but this is how I like best to use it. Always keep the radar pod and the storm aligned as seen from the pilot's seat. 